All right. Welcome, everyone. It is Tuesday, November 14th, uh, 4 p.m. Pacific time. So wherever you are in the world, welcome. Uh, my name is Jen O'Sullivan. Hey, and everyone. It is Tuesday, November 14th. It always does that where we double up. Do I remember to not allow that to happen? <laughs> uh, but anyhow, we are going to dive right into a bunch of questions because there are a lot. So sometimes we can't get through them all, but I try my best. Okay. So, uh, let's see. I'm going to try and answer just generic health questions first. I know a lot of you guys have questions about phototherapy, so we're going to save those until the end. Um, so, let's see. Um, okay, so a lot of you guys have different random health issues. Uh, one person's asking, she has a breast lump and waiting on a mammogram. What can I do from here? a month wait for the scheduled mammogram. Um, I would go in and get a thermography, see if you can do that. Sometimes you can get it on your own, uh, but to ensure I won't, it won't get worse. Um, it's a bit painful and tender to the touch, but solid. Um, I'm, I'm not, you know, an oncologist, but usually uh, when it's uh, solid and tender to the touch, it could be something else that's not cancer. I think we all go there. Uh, usually cancer is messy and kind of all over the place, uh, like feathering almost out like a flower or something, uh, especially in the breast area, but, um, but you don't know, right? We don't know. And so it could just be a swollen lymph node. It could be any number of things. So what I would encourage you first and foremost is not to freak out, like don't, get too stressed out because remember stress causes an acidic environment and so that causes other things to go haywire uh, but I would just encourage you to take some deep breaths get some time in on yourself to relax <laughs> uh, literally take deep breathing because remember uh, disease and illness can't thrive in a fully oxygenated environment so we do deep breath work but also consider you know upping your supplement game just looking at things that are high in uh, you know, antioxidants. So that could be anything from, you know, higher dose plant-based vitamin C. Uh, that could also mean uh, any number of juices that you might know about that have high antioxidants, uh, different berries and whatnot. But I also look at things like um, just general immune support, like NAC, uh, you can also look at turmeric. Those are really helpful for your um, adaptogenic response. That's a huge thing as well. Uh, so one thing that I would consider, though, is um, is possibly putting some essential oils on it. So one thing that I like to use would be, say, frankincense. Uh, it's, you know, high in alpha pinenes. So you could also use pine. Like, so there's a couple essential oils that are, have a high affinity for alpha pinenes, but you can just rub that on again. That is just helping. So what an essential oil rubbed on topically does for your cellular health is that it is, uh, they're very small particles. So they almost fall in that category of nanoparticle, um, things in nature because they can break through cell, they go, they actually break through cell membranes and they break through, you know, the blood brain barrier, that whole thing, because they're really teeny tiny. So that is something where you could rub on an essential oil like pine or frankincense just to help support the oxygenation of your cells. So that's what it does. It actually helps your body. Um, it helps the mitochondrial function within the cells uh, have enough room and feel and be clean. So that's why essential oils, any essential oil, uh, that you might grab is a good thing. Now I don't encourage you to use just any brand. There's very few brands that don't fractionate and don't rectify. There's actually only two here in the United States that do not do that. So you're welcome to message me on, um, what those companies are. I've always shared those companies. There's always been two. I've always said there's always been two. You guys just never paid attention. So um, there's two companies that do not fractionate and do not rectify. And, uh, you know, you can just grab some some essential oils and try that. So something to consider. Uh, I don't sell essential oils. So you're welcome to just message me and tell me, you know, ask me which brands I would use. Um, so that's what I would go for that. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to talk to my daughter Okay, so I want to just make sure, so she's getting migraines, 
what can I do or show, help her be interested to try, say, patch therapy? Um, so number one, I don't get into helping people with patches with migraines. I know that I've seen people walking around with patches like on their temples and stuff like that. But oftentimes what we want to do is look at the source of the issue. And so why is she getting migraine? You know, is she have hormone, home, hormone imbalances? Does she eat a lot of dairy? Does she uh, have any caffeine at all? So uh, that's my first question. My first question to all of my clients is how much caffeine are you drinking? And they are, oftentimes would just say like one or two cups of coffee, or maybe they're drinking a soda or something like that here and there. But, um, but it's usually the culprit. So what I mean by that is you have to go off of all caffeine and anybody that suffers from migraine um, often is not. They're, they're taking things like Excedrin, which is loaded with caffeine. They're, they're using caffeine to kind of offset the migraine, which is actually causing the migraine to be even worse. So if you're on any medications that are migraine medications, they often have caffeine in them again, to offset the migraine, but it's actually a bad downward spiral cycle. So we just want to get off all caffeine. It takes about 30 days. You will go through withdrawal. So it's much like being a heroin addict. Uh, it's, I'm not even joking. It's no, it's the worst. So you've got to get off of all caffeine, um, and start drinking a lot more water. So you're going to drink, you know, half your body weight in ounces, but realistically the best way to do that is just take three or four big gulps every 30 minutes. You want to take four to five ounces of water every 30 minutes, not every hour, every 30 minutes. Okay. So that's the best way to stay hydrated. Um, but look at her mineral levels. She might have a magnesium deficiency, which a lot of people do. So there's different ways of going into that, but you know, I mean, certain patches can help because they can kind of open up the pathways a little bit more like Eon or um, even X39. But generally speaking, you're going to be better off looking at the root cause of the migraine. Okay. What are your thoughts on teeth whitening? Uh, is there a safe or healthy way to do it? I think the best way to do it is to use a charcoal soap. So number one, obviously find out the source of why you're having stained teeth. So if you drink coffee or tea, uh, or eat anything that is heavy in staining material, uh, you want to stop, stop it. <laughs> so you want to uh, try to find something else that won't stain your teeth, but you can use charcoal uh, toothpaste. And there's a bunch out there. You can even make your own. So it's very easy to make your own. Uh, lots of recipes online, but I just think, um, I think Hello brand is the one that we use. I think it's called Hello. Uh, and we don't use the fluorinated one. So just that's an easy, clean toothpaste to use. Okay. Um, let's see. So if you're going to get a virus or a flu, what is the best protocol to help your body detox? So as far as protocols are concerned, uh, there's multiple ways to look at this. Um, doing a supplement that has chlorella in it, uh, that's a good way to help yourself when you get it. But part of it is to help fortify your body. So we don't want to have the mindset of like, when I get it, what do I do? Um, you have a, a window of maybe 24 to 48 hours to really like sh shrink down or truncate the length of whatever you get. But if you let it go beyond like the 24, 48 hour mark, uh, and you're say on day four or five, of, and then you start trying to get healthy, I'm going to tell you right now, you just got to let it run its course. So, you know, it's kind of like the enemy storming the beach right? At, at the beginning, there's not a lot of enemies. So you can kind of attack. If you attack hard and strong, you can mitigate the, the whole thing. If you allow them to storm the beach and then you kind of like let them come up into your camp and now they're like infiltrated, it's much harder to win the war. So that's why whenever you're just at the beginning stages of feeling anything, you want to attack. But ultimately we want to fortify. So that means making it so that they can't get in in the first place. So that's where I look at things like uh, vitamin C flushes once a week. I'll do that during the winter months. I'll do literally get some, um, the only time I really ever recommend taking isolated nutrients. So you need to get a high dose of vitamin C powder supplement that you can consume somehow. Like I, I drink it, I put it into a drink and it's a 4,000 milligram that I sip over the course of about an hour. And then I might get into a second 4,000 milligram. Um, but I'm just slowly kind of, you know, 
that's not super slow for some of you. So you have to get used to it and figure out your body. But some people will do a thousand milligrams every hour on the hour until you hit bowel tolerance. So that means that your body's going to get to the point where it is saturated uh, with vitamin C. And you'll know because you'll get a rumbly stomach. Okay. If you drink a ton of vitamin C all at once, guess what? You're going to just, it's just going to blow right through you and you're going to have a big, huge, like Montezuma's revenge in the toilet. So you want to do it slower. It's a better thing to do a thousand milligrams every hour on the hour until you hit bowel tolerance. And the reality is some people, um, the sicker you are, the more it's going to take. So you might have to do 2000 or even 4,000 every hour. Like it actually is a very strange thing, depending like the sicker you are, the more your body can handle. And so it's a, it's a point where you start feeling a little gassy, little tummy rumbling, um, you know, not blowout, but if you get to blowout that you've gone overboard. So so that's uh, called bowel tolerance and you want to get um, buffered vitamin C. So you can look on Amazon and find something that would work for you, but just kind of do that. Um, you could also go in and get like an IVC, but you actually have to ask the person that you want like double or triple. You won't get to bowel tolerance with IVC, but the IVC that you can get at like those hydration room places are very low dose. It, you know, it's, it's really useless. So that's kind of like fortification. Whereas if you actually have something you need like double or triple and um, you need to let them know. So as far as uh, phototherapy, glutathione is a big one and X39 would be a big one. So those would be two that I would use for sure to fortify. So, uh, you know, I don't leave the house in public. I don't go out in public where I'm going to see a lot of people without glutathione on. So as far as different supplements you can take, like I said, there's NAC, um, you know, the, the green caps, which has chlorella and a bunch of other things in there, which I highly recommend um, getting good, good probiotics. in. you want to really support your gut health and not just do it with like one, you want to do multiples. So that's important. Digestive enzymes will actually help your immune system as well. Uh, getting in, like I said, just a regular plant-based vitamin C, which is different than what we just talked about. And I take those at night. Like I might even take a handful of those at night. Um, so there's all different ways of fortifying your body. So that's something to consider. Um, Okay. So my niece needs a kid kidney transplant. She's believing for a miracle. Is there any natural re remedies to help her kidney function? Well, part of it is drinking enough water properly. Um, part of it is getting the right minerals that she needs for her kidney. Uh, so just basically what she's eating and all of that is plays a, a role in that. But um, there's some, some renal functions, uh, supplements from PRL that I always, you know, enjoy sharing with people. Uh, Rena Ven is a good one. So again, any of you guys on here, um, you can get PRL through a practitioner. So if you know somebody who carries it, you can use them. If you want to contact me, you're welcome to get my link. And it's just a practitioner link so that you have access to a practitioner brand. You need a practitioner in order to get those. So but yeah, I mean, you want something, you can even go on PRL and look up Renaven and see what the active ingredients are in there and then find a supplement that has like the top two or so ingredients in a supplement that is supporting of kidney function. Um, okay. So, all right. So let's see. Um, friend who's facing surgery for endometriosis. So she hasn't done it yet. So she said, you're meeting with her to do a couple of muscle tests. So I'm assuming you're a actual practitioner that knows how to do muscle testing. Um, I don't, I don't encourage anyone doing that unless you actually know what you're doing because most people do it very wrongly and they use it to diagnose and treat, which is completely wrong and irresponsible. So if you do MRT muscle response testing and know how to do it, that's great. But remember triangulation. It's not about, do you need this? Don't need this. What do you need? It's about, did the muscle re response testing confirm like two other things that confirmed the same thing? <laughs> okay. So it's, it's really a confirmation device, not a diagnostic device. And Sadly, uh, too many people use it as a diagno diagnostic advice or uh, you as a lay person have learned how to do it. And so now you're just doing it on everybody. So again, I don't, I don't know if that's you or not. And Hey, if you are a full on practitioner and know how to do it, great. Um, so when it comes to endometriosis, 
Uh, if she's not convinced on the surgery yet, I would get her into fasting. I would get her into doing some, uh, you know, once a week, 24 hour fast, get her into intermittent fasting, get her to get up to a 36 to 48 hour fast um, is going to greatly help that. Uh, and that's something that you should look into. Um, and yeah, she can, you're thinking about different patches, X39 glutathione. I could say, yeah, you could have her start there too. So just a, a, a precursor to my Tuesdays with Jen course. So my Tuesdays with Jen, uh, as a naturopath, I usually discuss all sorts of topics. We don't, this is not a patch class. So that class is next. So some of you guys uh, who maybe are on here thinking this was all patches, it's not. This is our Tuesdays with Jen. And those of you guys who are used to my Tuesdays with Jen are wondering, why are we talking so much about patches? It's because these are the questions that are coming in. So uh, I'm trying to pull the questions that are just about um, regular stuff. Okay. Any suggestions for helping lower triglyceride levels other than diet? <laughs> that cracks me up. <laughs> um, because at the end of the day, it's your sugar. Okay. So here's the interesting thing about your body. And nobody really understands this. But if you're eating processed sugar at all, or if you love fruit, Okay, so you're like, wait a minute, that's natural sugar. Isn't that healthy? No, because some of the fruit sugars that you're eating, because fruit is now wildly hybridized to be sweeter. So if you go to some apple orchard that has an heirloom, or maybe on your property, you have an heirloom apple tree, you know, those apples are tiny and they, they, they taste really mild. That's a normal apple. That's what God created. <laughs> Okay. We, on the other hand, decided they need to be rounder and bigger and sweeter. So when you eat any fruit of any kind now in 2023 that has been hybridized, which 99% of all the fruit that you're eating has been bigger, rounder, more perfect. The skin is better colored and it's sweeter. Okay. Your body knows no different from the apple that you're consuming that is bigger and rounder and more perfect and sweeter than a Snickers bar. Hear me when I say this, your body knows no different because what happens is that sugar that you think, well, isn't that from nature? No, because it was hybridized and now it's got far more fructose. Used to not have that much fructose, maybe in the 10 percentile. But now it's 25 to 50% fructose, which is pretty much table sugar. Okay, you got glucose and fructose, 50-50 on table sugar. So what happens is the glucose is readily metabolized in your whole body, head to toe, to convert to energy. The fructose is not. Your body doesn't really know what to do with that. So your body stores it or converts it into, guess what, triglycerides. So those of you guys dealing with like bad cholesterol, LDL levels and not understanding why, and you're like, I don't eat anything with high cholesterol. I'm like, I do really good. I'm, I don't deal with salt. Like you, you just like all sorts of messed up because people don't understand how our bodies convert fructose into triglycerides because that's a stored version. It's just like floating around in your blood and potentially stored. So then we get all of these bad messed up things. So so it is diet because you're eating too much sugar. Now, I don't know what Carol's doing. She asked the question, but uh, like I eat too much sugar, you know, and I'm, I'm like, I don't want the sugar, but then I eat some and I'm not even talking about like cake, right? What else are you eating that have, has potential actual sugar in it? So just, just think that through. Um, also exercise is a big deal. So if you aren't getting any exercise, um, in a way that you're breathing heavily, like break a sweat. So, you know, I know you're asking for probably easy, the easy answer, because you said like, what else, what could I do other than diet, exercise and water? Well, I, you might not have known that it's your sugar intake and it's most, most likely because so many of you have decided that fruit sugar is okay sugar and it's actually not. <laughs> so you're like, well, what can I eat for fruit? Well, organic, wild, harvested blueberries. 
that's it. So yeah, unfortunately, our fruit has been really, really, really bastardized. Okay. Um, so I have a 10 year old on a 10 year old relative who's trauma, whose trauma at a young age has emotional issues. She's on medication, uh, one that's an adult medication. They're looking at adding more medication and I'm heart sick over this one. Okay. So number one, we, we talk about this sometimes is like, you have an adult, you have a 10 year old relative. So she's not even like your child even as a grandparent, it's like impossible. So just know that unless the parent is asking your advice, uh, you're going to have a real hard time because I have seen this happen with my immediate family and their children. And you can't talk into someone's life that doesn't want to hear it. So that's a real important thing to remember. Uh, so that's unfortunate. So lots of prayer. But as far as just asking them or having a conversation, any conversation you have with any family member around something you think is they're doing wrong is always going to go sideways. Now, I'm a naturopath and I've got a ton of degrees behind me and my own family will not listen to a word I say about any medications. So they won't listen to me. They're not going to listen to you. So you know, from patch therapy's perspective, so we'll go here for a minute. Um, it's an easy thing to say, you know, an easy thing to help with emotional things like Eon. Really easy to say, hey, just try this. I'd like to gift you a 30-day sleeve and she, she can wear it five days a week and take the two days off. She can wear it 24 hours a day for five days and then take two days off so they get more out of that sleeve, you know, the weekends off or whatever. But um but it's a, a difficult thing. And so part of it is, and this is where we go back to diet and lifestyle, but um, I'm going to guess, first of all, she's not being worked with from a trauma emotional perspective, I'm assuming. They're not working on trapped emotions and things like that, right? They, again, depending on where they're at and how, you know, what type of practitioners they're working with. But uh, the other issue is, most humans don't correlate emotional trauma, emotional like distress, right? So there was trauma, but then there's this emotional component that becomes a uh, manic depressive almost. Now we can't use those specific words, but it becomes this kind of like, she's okay. And then she's just not okay. She's okay. And she's not okay. And there's this, this kind of rubber banding effect when it comes to our emotional health and especially in a 10 year old, uh, and you didn't say if it's a girl or a boy. So we don't know if it's a, if it's a girl, there's a different type of emotionality there. If it's a boy, again, a different type of emotionality, but, um, food, food is a massive trigger, especially in 10 year olds, because they're starting their hormonal change at that point. So it's an issue of getting, this is where the parent, if you're not the parent, you can't help. They need to get off all dairy, all gluten, all sugar, including fruit sugars. And that's a real hard thing to do for a 10 year old. But if you have someone in your, like you're the caregiver, it's a lot of work. So even if you are the mom and I just told you the key, you're going to be potentially like, I have no bandwidth to do that. Like to you, that's a stressful thing. So it's the decision you guys have to make as a family. You have to sit down and talk as a family. So you have a relative who's dealing with this. You have no say at the table. You don't have a seat at the table unless you're one of their confidants, right? So it gets a little bit tricky for sure. Okay. So uh, I'm going to move into the questions, the other questions on the naturopathy page and see how we do here. Uh, castor oil. We've done some talks about castor oil. What do you think about castor oil? I don't use it. I know a lot of people like it. I I've done it before, uh, when I'm doing like parasite cleanses, you know, pa castor packs, but, um, a lot of people love it when they're get it going through, um, cramping and stuff like that, but it's messy and sticky. So I tend to not, it's too much effort. <laughs> 
Can you recommend anything to help lower cholesterol? So we just talked about that. So you're going to go off of all sugar, including all of your fruit. Um, so that's something to do. And the red, right, red yeast rice is just like small. It's not going to do much, honestly. So garlic extract, all that stuff isn't going to do much. You have to, you have to stop eating the stuff that is causing it, which is the sugar. Um, Okay. I heard you sharing goat's milk is better than cow's milk. Okay. Goat's milk is milder on your system, but it's not, it's not, you shouldn't be drinking it. So it's not like, I think I said, uh, if you have to drink milk, go with goat's milk, but none of you have to drink goats, any milk. You shouldn't be drinking a milk from another species. So let's just put it that way. Um, it's animal protein. So animal protein in the stomach of a human is going to read as acidic and then your body's going to leach calcium from your bones and other places to placate that animal protein so it's just causing osteoporosis it's causing all sorts of problems with your blood and everything so just not a good idea um i think the question would be like an infant who but even still like an infant who needs to be on like your own, whatever, do the best you can with the organic formula. I know there's stuff in Europe that you can get that's better than here in the States, but um, realistically, like once your child is weaned off of breast milk, you should be not even worrying about any other animal milk. So, okay. Plantar fasciitis, uh, any recommendations? So one of the things that I think is interesting for a lot of people when they're trying to work with that, uh, kind of issue and swelling. And, um, I've talked about this before. I don't know the past probably eight years or so with some of you guys about getting super feet. I have them in every single pair of my shoes. I got a new pair. I know you guys see my pictures. I usually have, I have like all the colors of these stupid shoes. These are those, um, ultra ultras, but I have in this one because I left the floorboard in the thin, um, these are the uh, carbon fiber ones that I usually wear in my mountain biking and cycling shoes, but, uh, they have all, every shoe. I have so many pairs. It's ridiculous. And they last forever. They never go bad. So they're better than normal orthotics because they help with specific things. Like your arch support is back farther. They're not, or these are not arch supports. So be clear that this is a bone support. This is leg support and heel support. So this is going to help um, pull the fatty tissue of your heel into the right spot to help with plantar fasciitis. So, um, but anyhow, and it's going to help with all of the things that you have issues with on your feet. Um, I know a lot of people say stretching and stuff like that, but you really have to correct your footwear. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, okay. I need to start liking these so that I don't mess up and <laughs> get off with the wrong questions here. Okay. <clears throat> Vaginal atrophy, painful intercourse. Um, been married to the same person for 39 years. My last gyno exam said vaginal atrophy. Since the exam, I've gotten two UTIs. So you're on a couple medications. Um, and then you've gotten four yeast infections. Okay, from these medications, do you think almost every lubricant I use uh, to make intercourse less painful causes me an issue of some sort? Um, so you've been in menopause for seven years. Uh, okay, so it's a great question and one that is real important to kind of think about the fact that your estrogen levels have completely tanked. Uh, you know, if you can get on a DIM supplement that uh, is really good, uh, my favorite one is estroflavone. So that's something to consider. Um, but, you know, we've talked about this too, like before intercourse, you go to the bathroom and right after intercourse, you go to the bathroom. So you squeeze out a little urine just before intercourse. And then just after you squeeze out a little bit of urine, you've got to do that to help clear your UTI. But then as far as the yeast infections, you also have to kind of get your um, microbiome under control. So part of it is just corrective health on a, on a grander scale. So there are things that can help um, correct that. One of them is getting 
and uh, more of an abundance of copper peptides in your body. So we talk about that at length, GHKCU. So that can be corrective. Uh, you also want to consider, um, again, like I said, what you're eating and how you're supporting your microbiome, but also your estrogen levels. That's why I say a DIM supplement would be, <clears throat> DIM, D-I-M, would be something I would look into, especially since you've been in menopause for seven years. So uh, yeah, the lubricants and all of that are, you know, they just don't do anything. If anything, they kind of can make things worse. So <clears throat> you're going to need to work on your like, your, your, your new body <laughs> and try to help it heal. It could be about three months. And so you and your husband could make a decision to like, you know, that you're going to service him and just let your body heal for the next three months. But you've got to do things specific to that, which is working on your gut health, working on your hormone health, um, and, and looking at how, you know, how you're kind of working on some of these medications. So I don't know why you're on metformin. Um, I, I would not be on that. That can cause a lot of issues for a lot of people. So that's one thing that I'm not a fan of. And I know a lot of doctors just like people are on metformin for a bunch of different reasons, but um, if it's because of diabetes, you know, you're on another drug, uh, Jardians, which is also for um, blood sugar. So I'm assuming you are, if you have type two diabetes, fine. You actually don't metformin is, really doesn't help. So, but I would look into, um, something simpler like, um, and again, you'd have to ask your doctor about this, but, um, let's see, I can't remember the name of the drug. Uh, there's one that's really helpful, but benign, it's not like as it doesn't have the side effects of metformin because metformin can actually cause that can cause vaginal atrophy and can cause um, erectile dysfunction in men. So and I personally don't think anybody should be on metformin, but um, a, a carbose or aco, a, a, a carbose. I've heard people pronounce it acarbose, but um, I was taught a carbose. So that's something you can look into uh, less, less problems on the back end, but um, but you guys can get your blood sugar under control. If, if you are pre-diabetic and you're on those medications, you got to get off those right away and you need to make lifestyle changes. If you are fully diabetic, um, I'm, I can teach you exactly how to get to not be a diabetic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the simple answer is you need to start practicing an undulation of intermittent fasting and do it properly. So you're going to do 12 to 17 hours within that range, but not the same. I know some of you are like creatures of habit. Don't do like 14 hours every, like mix it up. So if you need to make a calendar and do a 12, one 12 hour day, one 16 hour day, one 18 hour day, then go back to 12 and then six, you can do that. Like you can do a three hour rotate, you know, three day rotation for those of you that have to be structured, but then once a week, do a 24 hour fast. Like that is going to help you immensely with your diabetes. But then I want you to also consider like sugar is the enemy. Like it legitimately is the enemy. And, and it's, it's an unfortunate problem for a lot of diabetics that they just, you're, you're addicted to, we're all addicted to sugar because that's what makes our blood up, right? It's like glucose is our whole body. So you're of course going to be addicted to it. So I always tell people, you know, that are really trying to stay away from sugar is just don't eat it until like, if you have, if you just have to have something at some point, wait until at nighttime, what happens in the morning, if you have any sugar, if you have more than six grams of sugar per meal, six, that's not a lot, six, count it. If you have more than six, it's going to shut off your full hormone. So that basically your hunger hormone is going to still be on is why we're constantly snacking all day long and then constantly wanting more sugar. So just whatever you can do, hold off as long as you can to have anything. Just say, no, 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 no. Like, let's say you have a cake and you're going to have that cake. Wait until like after dinner, like actually do the after dinner dessert thing. It's the only time because it's going to, it's going to allow you to just have it then and it will forego the all day long, right? If you have a donut in the morning or anything sweet, like if you have a, a bowl of fruit, you're going to crave food all day long and sugar. So, you know, I help people with like the SP6 patch and some other things, but, you know, one of that is just trying to, um, yeah, I mean, you, you got a lot there. So for sure. <laughs> okay. Um, 
what laundry detergent can I use that's free of toxins? Okay, so I'm I'm gonna take a sip of this because I haven't drinking anything for a little over half an hour, which is not good. It's a probiotic mix um, from a company that I don't sell. So it's called ProMix and I like it very much. There's nothing in it that is synthetic. One of my biggest issues is synthetic free. So laundry detergent, full of synthetics, most companies greenwash. So um, somebody said, I love Thieves. Thieves has never worked in our household. And the reason for that is because it's just not good for people that have hard water. It absolutely doesn't work. It's useless. So sorry, thieves. That's a that's a product I've never been able to use here in the house. So uh, we use um, there's a couple different things like nine elements. You can get the there's a fragrance free one. There's a, a I think it's it's like a citrus one. That one's really good. A lavender one is terrible. It, it, those that's a those are bad. But there's some that one and then eco. What is it called? Eco something, there's a fragrance free one. You got to get the fragrance free one. So, those are very uh, clean detergents. And uh, that's kind of it, unfortunately. So, yeah. And Thieves is like way too expensive and you get a very small amount. So, sorry. I know all of you guys, Thieves lovers, it's just not the best. It's too expensive for what you get. And it only works with people that have like soft water. And it's like, who has that? I don't know. We are not allowed to have it here we get fined in the city here. <laughs> um, I've been hearing the past few years. Oh, it's Catherine. Hey, Catherine. I've been hearing the past few years that all seed oils are bad. I know my son keeps talking about this too. I'm like, oh, here we go with this one. What does that mean? Um, okay. Like, does this include grape seed oil? Uh, okay. And your recommendation oil for cooking and baking. Okay. So Part of the issue with seed oils is that, um, I, I know, and some people will say like, you can't, you have to avoid, avoid seed oils. Um, <laughs> okay. So there's a couple of things to understand here. Number one, that is not true for topical application. So, you know, we're using a lot of seed oils topically because they are really good for your skin. So one of the things um, that people will say is seed oils for cooking, right? So this that's that's the problem. So when you're consuming seed oils, so you can do uh, like I mean, there's some different things um, like avocado oil, right? Yeah, look at Trader Joe's. I mean, I know she lives near me, so she would be shopping probably at Trader Joe's. But like like Trader Joe's has um, avocado oil, which is great. And that would be something to consider, but they also have, I think it's like the sunflower oil, which we just recently purchased. And Jacob got all on my case about because we are making uh, this gluten-free cornbread that needs like a baking oil. And when I use it with avocado oil, it doesn't taste that good. So like the sunflower seed oil is like cleaner, but like corn oil and canola oil, obviously those are out. Right. But, um, but grapeseed oil is kind of like a, a thing that a lot of people cook with. Now, I don't, um, I don't think it's like a huge deal because when you look at the Mediterranean diet, you do have like that is in there, but you also get, um, because, okay, seed oils, when you're consuming too much of them can cause inflammation in your body. So part of that, um, like olive oil isn't an issue. Uh, so I'm just curious that, you know, there's this mix in people's brains or, you know, you hear one thing and there's just not enough evidence to support that like all seed oils are toxic or harmful. And so it just depends, right? Um, I think it depends on what it is that you're looking at. And that's why I said avocado oil is a good one. Um, coconut oil, I think is good to, to cook with. The olive oil, I think as well, but it depends on the burning point. So that's why, you know, if you're trying to fry something or, you know, it's like certain ones have different um, uh, heat points. So that's where you get the olive oil, like the light olive oil or avocado oil, you can actually do um, hotter, which is nice. Uh, so Right. I think, I think we just have to kind of figure our, 
you know, how, how many of you are over consuming seed oils? That's where I think, I remember one gal a while ago started getting into like, okay, well, we're doing essential oils and then, you know, oh, but you should be consuming certain oils too. And there's all these health benefits. Well, no, it's because those health benefits were based on for your skin. So we're just got to look at what it is that we're doing. And then if you're cooking them or cooking with them, they change. So that's hopefully helpful. <laughs> okay. It's a good question though. Okay. Dr. Barbara O'Neill um, has a healing center. Uh, okay. She's trying to help people naturally. She's in Australia. She says that apple cider vinegar is not good for the body, which is the opposite of what nearly everyone else teaches. Okay. Would I understand why? Yes, I do. Uh, I don't remember her explaining. I could also reach out to her. Okay, thanks for considering my question. You're welcome. Okay, so generally speaking, so what I know of how she teaches and why, uh, she's an older woman who, you know, follows a lot of different doctors as well. So she's, she's you know, she's good to listen to. Is because of what I would say is the problem. <laughs> It's like the American supersize me. You go from, okay, I've heard that apple cider vinegar helps you lose weight. So now I need to, I really just need to up my apple cider vinegar game and I need to drink like a cup a day. Well, the problem with apple cider vinegar in copious amounts is that it can deplete your potassium levels. It can cause too much acid in your body. So apple cider vinegar is technically an acid. So little tiny amounts fine can help with digestion can help you know your body um just kind of ph neutralize a little bit but when you over consume now it's pendulum swinging the other way so it's causing too much placation of that acid which just wreaks havoc on your whole system so i would agree with her from an american standpoint like y'all are nuts right you just do too much um the PRL brand that I use, they have a, a ACV supplement, which is a powdered form of apple cider vinegar. So it takes out all of that acid, still some in there. Uh, like if you tasted them or broke them open, they're there, that tart, but it's not going to be to the heavy level of if you were drinking it and causing like tooth enamel issues and other, other problems, but do you need it? And so it's kind of like castor oil, the original question, right? Eh, you know, I don't know. You know, I think that, I think that sometimes we are told we're supposed to do something. So we start doing it and then months or years down the road, you're like, I can't, I can't remember. Jen told me I needed to use NAC and I, I now don't know why I'm taking it anymore. So part of that is we got to figure out what it is you're doing and why, and then consider your, the rest of your diet. So I think that ACV or apple cider vinegar has some potential benefits in some areas. Now, I know um, Dr. O'Neill, she recommends like lemon water, which I would say yes to as well, but most of you do it wrong. So you have to slice a lemon fresh and squeeze half of it into four ounces of water and drink it back like quickly, you can't just let it sit there because that pH balance is perfect only for a couple of minutes and it's going to help your body only for a couple of minutes. So if you tried to like squeeze a couple lemons into a huge gallon of water and, and then store it and drink that throughout the day, well, guess what? It, that, that beautiful, weird, um, pH balancing lemon will turn to a non pH balancing acidic lemon in that oxidated water, right? Your water's ox part oxygen and it's oxidizing that lemon. So it only works with a fresh lemon drinking, right? Like we drink it right away. So again, it, it comes with the territory of us dummy dodo Americans not reading all the directions. So very interesting for sure. Uh, okay. Can you recommend a good liver cleanse? I love this question because there's no such thing as a liver cleanse. I know y'all have just thought there's this whole thing about you can cleanse your liver. Can I tell you right now that, oh, hello, there's no possible way for you to clean your liver. Okay, there's no liver cleanse. Your liver just laughs at you. 
you try to do something for three days, four days, seven days, somebody tells you there's a seven day liver cleanse, they're lying to you. Because anytime you do something new, your liver just totally adjusts and like, I don't know what this is. And it just flushes it through. The only true way to help clean your liver is a long-term shift in what you're doing. Long-term shift. So there are things that help like dandelion root. Uh, there's different herbs and different things that you can take that will help support your liver, but it's long-term. There's nothing you can do to cleanse your liver. It would be, okay, here's your liver cleanse. The next three years, you're going to do this. Yes, it's a three-year thing, okay, if not four. So that's where I sort of, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it, I, I'm just playing with you a little bit here, but that, I get this question all the time. There's no such thing as a liver cleanse. So you need to actually help support your liver by making actual lifestyle changes um, and one of that might, one of the biggest things you can help your liver with is work with your doctor to remove as many medications as possible that are just like outskirt ones you want to get down to. Like if you're on no medications, that's great. If you're on more than two, then you do need to work towards getting it down to no more than two. And even then look at the ramifications of the liver matriculation that those two have. So that would mean how do you bookend your day or your time every four hours? Like what are you doing to support your liver and to help uh, not overdo it? So that goes to the other side of that weird double-edged sword, which is your supplementation. Some of you are overdoing it with supplements. You're taking, you're consuming too many essential oils, right? So there's too much that your liver is just trying to like work through. So, you know, we go on different moratoriums, right? We'll take a supplement moratorium sometimes just to kind of, I mean, yeah, that's helpful. Just drink water, right? Who knew? So there, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot to consider with that. Okay. Black seed oil benefits. So this is a, it's so funny. All you guys are talking about oils and seed oils and, you know, castor oil benefits of taking it specifically with it, with it helps. What, what does it help with? So again, this was a thing where People were talking about black seed oil and that taking it internally ups your immune system. There's not really any evidence to suggest that. So I wouldn't do it. I don't do it. I'd say no. Um, okay. Can having gallstones keep someone from losing weight? That's an interesting question. Um, not that I know of. So one thing, and I'm going to look it up here because I can kind of look at some of the things that as your body is kind of working through um, like rapid weight loss, if you're doing, if you're losing weight too much, you can actually cause your body to have gallstones. So I don't know that there's any uh, thing that I know um, that could keep you from losing weight, but I think if you have like your gallbladder is not working properly, you know, I guess it could help. It could cause you to lose some weight, but it wouldn't necessarily keep you from losing weight. So there's, I think that's like the opposite of what you're asking. Um, so it's an interesting question. So I can't really answer it to, I've never done any actual research on it, but what I know with your gallbladder and having gallstones that, it sometimes can actually cause you to lose weight when you have gallstones, which is a weird thing, but, um, okay. Let's see. And then I think she messaged me. So if you guys ever message me and I'm not getting it, like Tracy just said, I also sent you a message. So I didn't get it. And I actually check my filtered requests all the time. So if you ever send me a message and you're like, dude, she's rude. She didn't get back to me. I uh, just like tag me in a post, say, Hey Jen, I sent you a message. Can you please check your 
check it. And that just means I can just message you so I can hover over your name and message you. And then there it is. She actually had a question that I never saw. Facebook filters out because I have so many of you messaging me. They just think that you're, they won't even put you in my spam request. That just goes into like my nowhere folder. Like I can't even, I can't even see them. So thank you for telling me that you sent me a message. Um, I'm 62. I eat healthy, no meds. I've been a runner for 40 years. Awesome. I've also been using some patches for almost nine months. Um, is it possible? Okay, so you're wondering, I think, didn't you ask this question already? I think that we actually went through this because you asked the same exact question maybe on Monday. Um, all right, so one thing to remember when you're using phototherapy is that it works best when your mitochondria are happy. So if you can get into a better routine of drinking more water, supporting your mitochondria, that might be like, we talk about coenzyme Q, coenzyme Q10 in the morning and turmeric at night. That actually helps your circulatory system. But PQQ with coenzyme Q10 in the morning might be just the trick for your mitochondrial function. And what I love about um, PRL is they have these combo complexes and one of them is PQQ with coenzyme Q10. And I believe there's even turmeric in it. I have to double check that. But, and then turmeric at night. You really do want to help support your body uh, with uh, with proper B vitamins, B complex as well. So, you know, getting some electrolytes in. So again, I don't, I can't speak to, you know, certain things, but I do know that certain patches that you're using, you, you have to understand that there is internal stuff going on. I have not in nine months gotten any blood work done nor has Tim, because we like seriously don't go into the doctors that often, but I'm, I'm getting to the point where we're curious enough that we have to make appointments. Um, so, you know, what's interesting to me is that you most likely have things happening on the inside that you have not been able to track yet. Uh, okay. Okay. I've been told that if you have had breast cancer, um, or if your mom or your sister had it, then you should not take DHEA, but I have never heard the reasoning why. So DHEA is a precursor hormone. It's not a hormone. So that means that it helps your body produce the right hormones. I don't see that there's any issue with it. It's not a hormone itself. It's a precursor hormone. Uh, I would say um, it's a matter of like probably a dim supplement that you want to be on because you want to create the right estrogen, not the bad estrogen. And a lot of people just think, well, all estrogen is bad. That's not true at all. Okay. So anyhow, um, and that's not true. So one of you guys answered her and you said DHEA makes estrogen and testosterone. That's 100% false. This is why we don't, um, you know, we got to be careful about answering questions here for each other because that's false information. Um, DHEA is a precursor hormone that helps your body regulate estrogen and testosterone, not make it. There's a big difference. Okay. So I'm just going to say this is incorrect. Please watch my Zoom <laughs> recording. All right. Is it's unfortunate, but I know you guys like to help answer each other, and sometimes you know, and this gal may think like, nope, Jen's wrong. You know, I've studied this at length, so this is one of my specialties is uh, hormones. Okay, I've been told. Okay, that was she asked that. Yeah, can you explain the mat the meaning of matriculate? Okay, you know when you go to school and you start college and you have to matriculate. What does that mean? It means you have to get yourself in and moving through the program. So when you take a supplement or you take a like pharmaceutical, you consume it, it breaks down, your enzymes start breaking it down and it starts to matriculate through your system. It moves through your system and it, it does its job, goes through, right? Eventually hits your liver and it has to go through your liver. It's part of the matriculation process of it going through your whole system. So that's what it means. Fun. Good question. I never know what I don't know that you guys don't know. So <laughs> there it is. Okay. We've got a couple more minutes to answer some of the other questions here about patches. 
Do patches interfere with immunotherapy cancer treatments? No. So the patches don't interfere with any medications. There's a big misunderstanding about how that works. So just to give you a short answer, if any phototherapy product caused your body to detox out, say, chemotherapy, which is an aggressive drug, it's like a massive toxin. If it, if it interfered with that, which some people say it does, which it doesn't, because if it did, that's the big, big guns. Well, then the little guns like your metformin and your thyroid medicines and all the things, dude, it would obliterate. It would obliterate. So we would have people on medications and a lot of you are on medications also using patch therapy. If it was causing to detox out all of your meds, we would have such a hard, we, this would be bad. So it doesn't interfere with any cancer treatment. Now, legally, I can't tell a cancer patient to drink water. I can't tell them to use an essential oil. I can't tell them, oh, you should try this supplement. We can't tell cancer people or people that are pregnant that they should do anything because I'm not their primary care physician. That's the only person that has a legal right to tell. So in court, if something happened and they said, well, Jen told me that I should be using this. I should be using this patch while I'm doing chemo or I should be using this oil. Guess what? We get sued. They lose, they win. I lose. So you, that is, it's a liability issue. Okay. Think that through you guys. This has nothing to do with it detoxing out those treatments because it would detox every every single thing else out, okay? So people who say that are just totally flat out wrong. Um, every time I put uh, one of the patches on, I get a migraine aura. You're not drinking enough water. Your mitochondria are sticky and sad. You need to have enough of the um, electrolytes in your body. You need to look at coenzyme Q10, PQQ, uh, turmeric. You need to look at certain supplements that are going to help your circulatory system so that your mitochondria are not like scrunched. Okay. Now they're not, now you've got your cell and it has like the little tiny mitochondria in there and they're the energy centers of your cell. But when you're, when your blood and your cells and everything is sticky and not oxygenated, and not cleaned out properly because you don't drink enough water, you're going to get a migraine aura anyways. Because, you know, this is trying to stimulate mitochondrial activity. So it's like, imagine a bunch of fish like getting activated in a small space and they're like freaking out. And so you're like, oh my gosh. So that's your fault, sister. <laughs> Sorry, it just is. So you absolutely need to um, fix that and maybe get some more magnesium in your system. So it's a good question though. And a lot of people do. Okay. So we don't, I know a lot of you have asked a lot of questions about different protocols and protocols for specific things. Uh, phototherapy doesn't, we don't say here's the protocol for cancer or dementia or Alzheimer's or cataracts, or, I mean, a lot of questions like that come in. Um, it doesn't do that. What we're saying is when you start to understand how phototherapy works, how patch therapy works, it's going to support specific things based on the patch that you use. So like if you look up carnosine, for instance, like carnosine is an actual um, peptide in your body. What does it do? What does it help for? Okay, well, circulatory system and brain health and stuff like that. So, you know... Could, could it help you to have more carnosine activated in your body? Yes. Could it help you to have more glutathione activated in your body? Yes. Could it help you to have more mitochondrial activity activated in your body? Yes. Could it help every single person on the planet to have more copper peptides activated in their body? Can we all say yes? But I'm not going to ever say that this is the protocol you use to treat this because that's not how it works. Because if I put something on my body that helps my body. So let me give you an example. I have like metal fillings in my mouth 
And I kind of think one of them is like leaching, like, you know, leaching into my body. And like, I've got, you know, I, I got to get them out. And I feel like I've probably got some sort of toxicity poisoning here. So I use glutathione because I want the glutathione to work there. Your body's not going to do that. Your body's going to go to work where it wants to go to work, not where you think it should go to work, right? So you might use a patch protocol for something that you think it needs to work on, but it's doing something else. And it might get to that eventually, but right. So we can't really say a patch protocol for any specific thing. It is working on your body and in your body, you just maybe not where you want it to do. Now you can easily look up a patch, a specific patch and a specific issue on YouTube and see what comes up. And like, so for the, for instance, dementia, there is a specific like testimony. Again, they're just testimonies. Doesn't mean it's going to happen for you specifically. Okay. So um, we're out of time and I'm going to go ahead and uh, end this one and then we'll start the next one. So uh, lots of questions. We got through as many as we possibly could. Uh, so you guys can hang out who are on here right now and we will start again. All right. Take care.